Luo Yang burns Liu Yan. And the Emperor is now at the mercy of Dong Zhuo. Though grim, this chaos may be the ideal chance for you to seek greater autonomy from the dynasty. Zhang Lu is currently no threat as his mother is our captive. However, should he find his courage, he could become a greater danger. More crucially, however, you are beset by rebellion. You must strike them down, lest they gain strength and multiply, overwhelming you. The Nanman tribes of the jungle are fractured and divided, just like the Han. Should they unite under one tribe, however, they will become an imminent risk to your rule. The future and legacy of your name lies in the moves you take next, Liu Yan. Make them count. All right, what's going on, YouTube? It is your senpai, the googly-eyed one. And today I'm bringing you a new series, uh, a little bit different from the TFT stuff that I've been doing. Not that I'm going to stop doing it, but... Uh, I've always been a huge fan of the Total War franchise, and man, when I saw that they were coming out with a new DLC for Three Kingdoms, I thought to myself, you know, I gotta cover at least one of these. So, here I am. So, today we're going to be looking at Liu Yan. Now, we're not starting at the 200 CE uh, starting point for our Fates Divided. Mostly because at that point, Liu Yan has already passed on his dynasty, emperorship, empire, faction to his son. So, I actually wanted to play a little bit as Liu Yan before I, you know, pass on the reins. So, I decided to start at 190. So, let's get right into it and check out some of the new uh, things going on with uh, this DLC. So for my faction, complete aspiration task to prepare your heir and offer them various bonuses once they take over. Enable aspiration trade-offs to generate the aspiration resource, which your heir can then use to purchase powerful bonuses. Keep an eye on the inheritance timeline to try to pass the mantle at the ideal point in time. And we're going to go over this right now and kind of what all this means. And this is our first mission, and it is to get rid of this guy. Jia Long was once an ally, a friend who helped you bring peace to these lands. However, there are whispers that he now plots against you, my lord. Before this can happen, you must swiftly crush him. And swiftly crush him, I will indeed. Alright, so... Don't mind me, just going to set a timer, uh, just so that I don't get caught up in, or don't get too caught up in this, and then suddenly we've got like an hour long video. As, as much as maybe some people would like an hour long video, I'm aiming for like 45 minutes or so. I feel like that's a good, uh, that's a good time. All right, so the aspiration mechanic and literally everything Liu Yan's factions got going on. So, these are the faction tasks that they were talking about. These are things that you have to do as Liu Yan, and once you pass off the reins, you can no longer do them. As far as I know, I haven't really done a whole lot of research into this faction or the DLC in general, and just kind of wanted to like fly by the seat of my pants. So, as you see, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. These eight, when, upon completing them, will give you these. And these are the inheritance buffs that you can use once you've passed on the reins to your son. Or your... I, technically, I guess you could make a different person your heir, but I think we're going to stick with Liu Zhang for this playthrough. And so as you can see, you have to do certain things to unlock certain buffs. 
So for instance, have three armies with the maximum number of units. So having three full stack armies and this uh, effect for 10 rounds, you have 35% redu uh, reduction to recruitment costs, which is pretty good. Have your heir lead and complete five battles. Instantly leveling up a character. Okay, that's pretty pretty good. Have a city at level six or higher. Complete construction in one term, turn. Not bad at all, actually. No of 15 living factions. We have the Artisan Commission spawns an exceptional ancillary. Eh, it could be good. Own 10 regions. 35% campaign movement range plus 20 morale. Uh, and have an income per turn higher or equal to 1500 which we might be able to do sooner rather than later. Uh, and that'll give us plus 35% income from all sources. Excuse me, I had a bit of a frog in my throat. And I don't think you guys really want to hear me clearing it in your ears, so... Did that just for you. So, those are the tasks we have to do and the potential buffs that we get after passing on uh, to our heir. Well, how does that work exactly? Well, as Leo Yan, you do these tasks and you build up this uh, aspiration right here. And then as Liu Zhang... You use the aspiration that you built up previously to enact these different buffs. The way to build up aspiration is these trade-offs. Now, they all have very, very bad downsides. With the upsides being your aspiration gain. So let's look at some of these. So we've got minus 5 public order, which goes to 10... Uh, plus 10% upkeep for all units, which goes to 20. 25% cal uh, calories. Ooh. Plus 25% character salaries up to a 50%. That's eesh. trade influence down for aspiration, military supplies down, minus income from all sources. Added construction time and minus satisfaction. So right off the bat, I think we're going to use this one. Now, the longer you have them running, it says right there. So in five turns, we'll go to level two. And then at ten turns, we'll go to level three. And got an itchy nose. Yikes. Um... So the longer you let these run, the higher they get. And it seems like level 3... So the negative essentially doubles at level 2, but then at level 3, it stays the same as level 2, so you just get a straight-up aspiration increase. Uh, let's look at some of this. So let's look at our courts. So we've got Zhu Gui... Chen Chao, Sang Mingan, and Ren Qi. And I'm. Please don't yell at me if I just butchered all of their names. I don't. I don't speak Chinese. You know. Uh, outside of that, diplomacy. So we only really know of three factions right now. We're already at war with one of them. Gong Du is the Yellow Turban, so we're not going to get anything going there. Maybe could make some schmoobs with Dong Zhuo and the Han Empire. Let's see. So, trade agreement. Han Empire. Let wisdom shine. Let's go ahead and negotiate this idea. Alright, so... Issuing an ultimatum to them would probably not work out in our favor. We could offer some, them some food. We don't really need any... Like, we don't need the huge surplus of food right now. And we only have to do it for 10 turns. 
That's probably the best we're going to do. So we're going to offer them one food for 10 turns for a trade deal. Boom. Beautiful. And so now... So the trade influence directly impacts the amount of money we get per turn for trading. But... Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. We don't have, it's not like a lot of our income is based off trading. So I might want to let this one start racking up too. Uh, also, something to consider. So depending on when you pass off the crown to the next in line, you get some of the, uh, you have to do it like within these time blocks. In the first time block, 190 to 194, you get a ton of buffs to your air, uh, plus 10 satisfaction, faction wide, an additional trade agreement, a whole bunch of experience for them, the Dong Zhu being marksmen and defenders, and the heir's army gets extra 15% campaign range. So not nothing crazy. I think the biggest thing are the marksmen, are these, are these guys, and as you can tell... They are just. Maybe we just compare them the people here are few, but enough to these guys, like straight up better than a lot of your archer militia, and I think even better, uh, better than like some of your later uh, archer units. Also, these guys are not only spear units, but come with the shield wall and the mixed spear front, and they're. They also have bows, and their range is actually pretty respectable. So, I think that is, like, the biggest upside for this. What you tend to see, though, is that as it goes on, it's literally all negatives. Like, things just get worse the longer you wait. So, I'm either going to aim for... 190 to 194, which is kind of like only 20 turns in. 195 to 198, which is only about 40 turns in. But I feel like once you get to 199, 200 CE, I mean, minus 10 public order, huge jump in character salary, minus satisfaction, minus 10 to all of your heirs' attributes. And then once you get to 201, it's like, now you're taking hits to your income and stuff like that. So I feel like these two are definitely what you want to aim for. Yeah. Definitely seems like these two are the, the major ones you want to aim for. So we don't want to get rid of Leo Yan too early. But we also don't want to hold off too late. And so what that means is we want to make as much aspiration and get as many of these done as possible. Some of them, to me, a little more important than others. Uh, for instance, having three full stack armies and having a decent income and doing that within the first 40 turns might be unrealistic. Having your heir lead and complete five battles, we could do pretty soon. Having a city of level six or higher, completely doable. Knowing of 15 living factions, that uh, kind of just depends on the progress of the game and the way things work. So, we'll have to see. Outside of that, uh, general ideas of the way I want to do the campaign... Uh, Part of me would like to push north, take over some of this, but we're currently kind of friendly with the Han Empire, and I don't know if I want to piss off Dong Zhuo so soon. Also, one thing I've noticed, um, when I played the Xi Ji campaign, and he starts right around here in this like little peninsula area, the Nan Man are super aggressive, like hyper aggressive, and they come after you really, really quickly. So that might be something to cons 
consider that maybe they also, I mean, being in this corner of the map is a super defensible area. They have the this river running through, which kind of stops enemies from coming in. They also have some really nice uh, plots of land, bamboo forests, stuff like that. So we'll, we'll we're definitely gonna have to see. But for now, let's go ahead and jump into our first battle. Is there anything else? So they completely changed the faction council, which I think is cool. Fortunately, it means that. Assigning a chancellor doesn't really seem to do anything. Oh, what else can we do? We can probably release this guy from service. Kind of don't need you right now. Uh, we've got assignments. we got up to two assignments we can do. I think one is definitely... This will give us more monies. Mustering time... Yeah, let's do mustering time. We'll have him set up so that next turn when we actually start to muster an army, uh, we can do that. Let's go ahead. Stop talking to you because we don't really need to talk to you. What else? Do we want to upgrade any of this? So this just gives us food. This right here, I think, is kind of worth it. The salt. Salt mines worth a lot of money. But uh, let's go ahead and jump into our first battle. So predicted casualties low. It's a decisive victory. But generally speaking, at the start of most campaigns, I like to kind of cheat cheese them a little bit i like to especially in the scenario where our enemy has no cavalry is going to be super slow moving around the battlefield if i can keep casualties low now uh early game as i'm sure anybody who's actually played three kingdoms knows a uh Your replenishment rate is not great. And because your replenishment rate is not great... Actually, how do I want to do this? Yeah. Do target will fire at will. I believe, yeah, geez, to group them up. And we'll toggle lock the group so that they'll move together. And let's go. Alright, so we'll put them right here at the crest of this tiny little hill. Move our cavalry off to the side. And these guys. We'll throw, throw them over here. Perfect, so put them on the hill. Alright, so we'll send those in. Send those in there. I did not think it possible to be this terrible. Yeah, you tell them. A terrible terrible and you can tell because look at this boom we're gonna send Liu Zhang over here and he's just going to can he duel anybody because we do need to do some duels it seems like man, they're not they're not about it they don't want no drama Let's bring you guys around. 
I kind of just want you guys to focus on... Yeah, have you guys focus on their units over there. All our cavalry just kind of cleans up. I don't know why. Oh. I always forget to struggle skirmish mode off, and it seems like the, the spearmen are in skirmish mode. I'm going to send you over here and go deal with that guy. I'll send you over there. I don't want to get caught up in infantry for the purpose. You guys have already kind of done your thing. So. Uh. And don't run directly into them. That would be bad, bad, bad. Yeah, screw that guy. Wish these generals would just route already. I mean, one of them's already dead, right? So, you would think it's a. Uh, be all she wrote but it is hard difficulty so you know the enemy will stick around a little longer people don't break exactly when you think they might should and these guys so I think now we'll throw in a cavalry charge and that should be the end of them honestly Really, really should. Yeah, see, our guys are losing. Oh, well, they did take a charge, so I guess that makes sense. Alright. So, I'm going to go ahead and claim victory. I'm not going to uh, do any chasing down, which I normally do, but... I mean, it, uh, eh, it just doesn't seem worth it. Ooh, block. Ooh, kick. Excellent. We outwitted them. So we lost 48 troops. Would have liked to have done a little bit better, but... Lost one Imperial favor. So... We're not going to execute this guy... Yeah, we're not going to execute him because we wouldn't get anything from it, but we'll release him because the 200 gold is good. And we'll ransom for an extra 144 gold. Uh, yeah, I think that is about where we want to be. So how many reforms we start? It looks like we start off with the commerce tree, the purple tree. So that's pretty good. Uh, yeah, both of these are farms. And food is important, but food's not important to us now. So I think I'm going to save the gold until we get to the salt mines. Treasury. Birds. This doesn't unlock. And then this is, I think, another change I saw where when you 
upgrade to like marquee or duke or king uh and essentially he gives you like almost like a talent tree to work with which is nice uh lets you specialize a little bit more maybe you don't care about spies you can put it into something else uh but i think yeah see these are both just the, they're literally the exact same farm oh excuse me so i think what we'll do is we'll just uh go to the next turn and so the nan man make it really really hard to invade uh because inherently the the nan man lands these lands have uh, so those you know but I'm pretty sure we, as a Han faction we take like extra attrition or something while in nan man lands so that could be a problem for sure uh oh I, I always forget that i uh so spoiler alert one thing i have done is i've run this uh early like literally up until now for a, lo a lot um like this particular start a bunch of times Mostly trying to mess around with OBS because when I was recording with OBS, for some reason the the recordings were coming out really choppy and just kind of gross looking, and not something that I would want to, not something I'd want to watch, and definitely not something that I want to upload to YouTube. And so I've done this start a lot, trying to like mess around with video features and stuff like that. I know I ended up going with uh right now I'm using Shadow Play to record the game and then OBS to record audio and my uh beautiful face. So And every single time I've run that, I always forget that you should probably just make him the leader of your army right off the bat just so that you can get that uh one thing done as fast as possible, but I don't think it's going to make or break us. So Let's see character salary military supplies and come from all sources satisfaction let's do military supplies and satisfaction and then we'll just have to deal with how to make people not upset so this guy will I'm think we're going to want to recruit or no it's the other guy we want so Oh, yeah, go ahead and have a stone pig. Stop complaining. You, we don't have a stone pig to give you, but we do have. Thanks so oh, much, actually. Not have much. We do not have much to give you for being upset, so you're just gonna have to be upset for a little while. That's fine. Yes, I am here. All right. So I have two archer units, two sword units. No. We'll just delegate this one. We shouldn't take too many casualties. 77. That is a lot. Actually, a lot more. And our generals took a lot of damage. Wow, that is crazy. I, I guess I should have just played that out. Hmm. We want the faction support. Some people are going to start to dislike us. So let's go ahead and occupy. We got our 5,000 golds. A already done. Construct or upgrade a building. So we need to do this anyway, right? So we'll go ahead and up start you upgrading. Because it's going to take you a couple turns to upgrade. So... Then we 
Right, 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 right. Do we want to recruit anybody else? I don't think we do. So we can't do anything with the Nanman tribes. King Wutugu. Is pretty much where we are. Can we negotiate with them? No, I guess we can. He 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 says me. Uh huh. That's nice. That's nice. But you're at war with like literally the entire world. Wow. Yeah, I'm not going to pay that much for your clay stuff, bro. So, let's see. I feel like we've got the 1500 per turn. Oh. Ooh. You're upset and you're just mad at the world. Uh, I mean, you know... Oh, alright, we've already done it. We've already completed it. Nice. So then we don't have to wait. And can recruit. Let's go with two more of these. Two more of these. And let's go with you. I feel like that's a fine place to be. Fine place to be indeed. So, what next? Well, we could go over there to Shu and grab this. Alternatively, we can go mess with the Nan Man. Our mustering times are pretty low, so we might be able to take them out super quick. I really kind of do. I don't know. It, like I said, the whenever I faced the Nan Man tribes, they were always so aggressive right out the gate that it almost feels like aggressing first is the right idea. And that's not, that. I mean, that's just from me playing, like, um, Sun Tzu, or Sun Jin, uh, who starts in this area-ish, generally, runs into the Nan Man pretty early. Shi Ji uh, runs into them pretty early, and now I am running into them pretty early. So, it would probably would. Then, do I want to build up a... Uh, we don't want to be super archer heavy. The archers are like the cheapest. We will keep this for now. And we can get over there in two turns, or we could just hit them. So let's see, you got. Five units, four, some nine versus a lot more than nine. 
We should probably at least wait for my units to finish mustering. Plus two food production doesn't really do a whole lot for us. It also doesn't give us a, more of a reserve capacity, so I really can't uh, can't swing it, I don't think. But I think we're going to have to just go straight after these guys. I think that is what is going to have to happen. I want to go now, though. I want to wait. Oh, this is always such a hard... Can I get a non-aggression pact? You could become Dong Zhuo's vassal. That just seems like a bad, 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 bad idea. All right, we'll wait. We'll wait. We don't want to sally out, especially in the middle of winter. Ma Tang. Well, since we're not going north, we're probably just going to ignore you, man. Like, I I really do feel like a southern push into Nan Man lands is where this, uh, where this is going to take us. So, get a new doodle. Now, normally, whenever I have done it, I love, I love, 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 love my replenishment, especially early, where you... there seems to be like two different types of factions that are gonna run their, like the way they're gonna run their starts. You're either gonna be super aggressive off the in the early game and just keep aggressing. Or you're not. And so for this, I probably want to go into the red tree. Plus eight military supplies will offset the negative to the military supplies I'm getting for aspiration. Recruitment cost for melee infantry. Satisfaction for vanguards. Minus two mustering turns are always nice. But it's always, for me, it's always the plus 10 replenishment. It's just so good early. So, 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 so good early. Alright, so this is going to take five more turns to upgrade. She's just pissed off. How is Public Order looking? Decent. So maybe we'll go with this one for now. Character salary. That's not too bad. Because really what we want is we want to build as much aspiration as fast as possible. Income from all sources. We'll see how that affects us because we can always turn it off. And essentially all that'll do is... It'll go on cooldown. I don't know how long it goes on cooldown. But that's not bad. Upkeep for units is probably the one that we want to stay away from. Uh, just because if we're going to fight the Nan Man tribes and we're going to keep aggressing early, which is looking like it's the plan, uh, we do not want our units to cost any more than they already do. That would just be foolish. That would just be super duper silly, and we're not going to be super duper silly. We're in it to win it. Yeah, see that? Minus the minus 10%, not so bad. We lost 40 gold in terms of uh, like monthly income, so that's, that's not bad at all. Alright, so we're going to attack you guys. And our casualties are predicted as being very high. Let's look at the map. Ah, that's why. So we could try starving them out. 
How long until... Turns until supplies are depleted. Turns until surrender. Alright, so let's... Let's try to starve them out, shall we? I think... So we're still getting, because of characters and negative, so we're actually still gaining supplies. So we're not, not looking too, too bad, actually. Do I want to build this? Do I just want to bankroll more money, more better? Mm, we'll keep bankrolling money for now, I think. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Go back to court. We have a chancellor. We could make a chancellor, but we're not... I don't think we're bringing in a ton of money from peasantry. Yeah. Uh, let's see. So if I was to assign a chancellor, we would get... Not only would their new salary be absolutely ridiculous, but we're only getting... Plus 15% from peasantry? That just doesn't seem worth it at all. I know it's not worth it. Uh, in terms of diplomacy, I still haven't met anybody new. I want to get a wife for my heir, but I know that the only option right now is like Dong Zhuo's 8-year-old daughter. And look, I know times were different back then, but... Okay, so they're sallying out. They won't have... They won't have the towers or the... Or the defenses. So... We'll go with replenishment. Liu Fan and Liu Dan have been under the claws of Dong Zhuo as your martial assistants to help them. This is in there for a unique opportunity. Oh, so I can save my sons. So I've so I have my sons back now, right? This guy is defected. So Leo Fan, Leo Dun. Oh, okay. So my sons are back. All right. Uh. Member of the court family. I wonder, I mean, it doesn't seem like their salaries went up at all, but alright, so, it's a decisive victory, and that is perfect timing, as if you hear my beeping in the background, you know that my alarm is going off. And this is, I think, a perfect time. So with that, this is more food. Whatever's. Oh, this is where it is. So the dense jungle. Fatigue and battles for non man man. Fatigue and battle for non man man. Minus or minus military supplies for non man man. And campaign movement. So, because we're not Nan Man, that could be a problem for us trying to move in, but I think we're just going to have to deal with it. Alright, well, I think we got a lot accomplished in our first episode, and, uh... Look forward to seeing what happens next. Uh, probably going to keep pushing south into the Nanman territory and hopefully it doesn't blow up in my face.
So, if you like the video, like, comment, subscribe. You know the spiel. And uh, other than that, you know, be good to yourself and to others.